see it right here behind me. They're dancing, aren't they? This weekend, Sacramento hosted auditions for the Frack Girls, a burlesque reality show placing classic vaudeville right in the heart of oil country. James Myers on how this reality show hopes to break the mold. We have all these beautiful women here, so it's just a flurry of glitter and feathers. A new burlesque reality show called Frack Girls held auditions in Sacramento Sunday. 20 hopeful performers auditioned for the coveted 8 to 12 openings. The twist of the series combines vaudeville showgirls with a roughneck audience. And we're trying to do a retro 40s style um, vibe to the whole show because it is different. We're going to take them to the oil fields of North Dakota where the men outnumber the women 100 to 1. And we're going to put on five shows there, which is going to be our season finale. Getting a new show off the ground is a huge undertaking, but this show has some major support. We're working with Doug Stanley from The Deadly Sketch. Um, we met with him. He loved the idea. He's going to be involved in every step of the way. And we're actually going to put these girls in RVs and take them there, pop out in some little town, have the girls walk down the street, and just filming on the RV all the drama that happens. And one of the things I noticed is with these girls, there's drama. You don't have to invent it. You're going to see behind the showgirl. It doesn't always look like this, so I'm prepared to face the world without the makeup and, you know, possibly the hair and uh, all the glitter. But you're going to see the frustrations and uh, the good times. Frack Girls is trying to break the mold on reality shows and shift audiences' perceptions of beauty. And what we're trying to do is to say, we love women in all their shapes and sizes, and you don't have to be a size two to be a star. You don't have to be a size two to be a star. I'm just guessing James Myers had fun during that report. The Frat Girls crew hopes to start filming episodes this June. Okay. Find different types of currency, but guess what? Not anymore. Yeah, James Myers drove about 20 minutes from the Capitol to show us what you can buy for a Davis dollar. It's a local currency that in encourages people to spend locally in Davis. Community currency is not a new idea to bolster the local economy. During the Great Depression, stamp scripts became very popular. Davis dollars have a one-to-one -one ratio. One Davis dollar can be purchased for one United States dollar. So how does this help the local economy? Take some Davis dollars and you go to Ken's Bike and Ski and spend it there. The owner there is probably going to spend it at Monticello Seasonal Cuisine and buy himself a meal there. And then she's going to go to Copyland and make some copies for her business. And he might come to the food co-op and spend some money here. And so it's a way of, of guaranteeing that down the line, all that spending is going to stay in Davis. Of the 25 local stores that accept Davis dollars, the Davis co-op is the most recent. It's a big thing for us and to have someone create something that allows us to keep our money here and show that we're committed to community development, I think it's a good thing. And here at the co-op, we're extremely excited to have it. People are really excited. They see it in my cash drawer and they're like, oh, can we get Davis dollars back? I say, sure. So we went to the streets to find out what Davis citizens think. Have you heard of Davis dollars? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I think it's a really good idea. Uh, it sounds a lot like Aggie Cash to me, but I think it's a great idea to keep the money in the community, kind of improve local economy. Spend one dollar at a, a big box store, then only about six, six to ten cents of that stays local. And if you spend that same dollar at a local mom and pop shop, about sixty cents stays local, so a lot more. And I like to point out to people that if you spend one Davis dollar locally, then a hundred cents of that stays local. Oh, I love I like that. that. Davis is not the only place doing something like this. There are communities in Brooklyn, Philadelphia, Portland, and Ithaca. They all have their own currency, and they have for decades. You live in Davis. I have do. Have you noticed the Davis dollars? I, I have yet to notice and, and experience a Davis dollar, but I might have to go do that today. Go hunt some down. I'm going to hunt down. I'll bring one in. Perfect. All <laughs> right. Well, some people get a doctor's note when they miss school. A Stockton man volunteers his time and his equipment teaching Tycho. That's drumming the kids, but now he can't do that because someone stole his drum set. Since Sincere Tonsil found out just how big of a loss this is to the community. Normally, Earl Fox backs his minivan and trailer right up into this driveway, but for the last few days, he's been parking it here out on the street, and that's exactly where thieves took advantage. It's hard not to listen to a drum. Some say the first one anyone hears is their mother's heartbeat calling them to life. 
After falling in love with the impressive sound of taiko drums in Japan, Earl Fox has spent 15 years giving hundreds of Stockton school children free lessons about how to lure sound from these skins. Most children during the course of the day, what are they told? Sit down and be quiet. Here they were being told just the opposite, stand up and be loud. Uh, yes, you have permission to hit the drum with reckless abandon. That kind of freedom and passion came to an end. And looked down the driveway and saw the, the recycle bin was uh, knocked over. So I said, oh, they've collected. I came out to get it. I got about halfway down the driveway, and I realized something was missing. Fox's white cargo trailer filled with some of what you see here. Stands, drums he had made, and some price at more than $3,500 disappeared after someone broke through a lock he bought because he thought that lock was supposed to be impenetrable. Fox gets emotional, thinking about having to ask for help to recoup what he feels has been stolen from his students. A $100,000 loss in monetary terms, but to him, so much more. Right now, Stockton police don't have any leads about missing Shime drums like this or the others belonging to Earl Fox. So if you've seen the drums or the white trailer they were in, you're asked to give Stockton police a call. Looking through a sliding glass door, photojournalist James Myers and I found ourselves face to face with a mother bear and her almost too adorable for words three month old cub. They put on a show, apparently oblivious to our presence thanks to the reflection on the other side of the glass. The mother hibernated for the winter underneath the deck of this home near Lake Tahoe. She gave birth to the cub under there in January. The residents of the home could actually hear it happening. Over the past few days, the two have been coming out. Mama Bear, very protective, is teaching little one how to climb and be a bear in the outside world. Because of the winter we just had, bear sightings like these in populated areas around Lake Tahoe might be much more common than usual this year. But it's, it's going to be a busy season. Ann Bryant of the Bear League educates people about these majestic animals and does what she can to help keep the bears wild and not dependent on people. It'll be a challenge this year. She says because of this season's unusually thin snowpack, the wild vegetation that bears feed on will dry up earlier than normal. And they know that there's food wherever there's people. So we're expecting a lot of calls and a, a lot of uh, attempted break-ins, windows that are left open, doors that are left open on homes where there isn't a person sitting right there. They're going to come and test it and see if they can get in, and they're going to go in. And uh, they're going to raid kitchens like crazy. It's, it's just going to be a nightmare this year. We can see the writing on the wall. With this mother and cub that just woke up from hibernation, Bryant says it's best to leave well enough alone for the time being. Eventually, she says these bears will need to be taught that this property is not their home. When this cub is really adept at climbing fast and way up high and real comfortable with it, and we know that the mother knows that the baby is ready, then we're going to help them encourage them to go on back into the meadow somewhere or into the into the forest a little bit more rather than being right here in a neighborhood and then we'll get the the crawl space sealed up so they can't come back